Jeff, how are you today? Welcome to everyone in the chat. Uh, first, let me say hi. Joel, J Joel, I was looking at the chat. Jeff, welcome to Automate All Things. How are you today? I'm great. How are you, Aaron? I'm good. I'm good. We've got some OGs in the chat, some new folks. Xavi, Glenn, Colleen, uh, uh, Joel. <laughs> Uh, Joel, good to see you. No Code Canada. Uh, if this is your first time, welcome to Automate All Things, where we learn to build cool stuff in one hour. I'm Jeff, excited to have you here. Uh, uh, give us the, the the 30 second intro into who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I'm I'm Jeff Roberts. I'm one of the co-founders of Outseta. Um, in short, we're a membership software platform, uh, but we consider ourselves all in one uh, membership software, which basically means in addition to payments and authentication and protected content, uh, we give you tools to grow your member base. So you mm -hmm. also get a CRM and email and financial reporting. But the basic premise is all these membership style businesses require the same tooling. We deliver it in a single platform and sort of give you the 80% of each feature that's most mm -hmm. important. Uh, so you can launch quickly. Got it. And I think, you know, I, I have gone down the rabbit hole of, of memberships myself as someone who, uh, you know, recently created a, a course on Airtable, uh, which, you know, everyone should go by That's the, the plug for today. <laughs> um, what would you say? Like, so yeah, like memberships is gating content and forcing people to sign up, which is easy, but actually really hard. Uh, what would yeah. you say is like the difference of Outseta with, with everything else out there? Uh, and how do you approach uh, kind of building this? Yeah, I think the, the big difference um, is all the membership software platforms, frankly, are pretty similar when it comes to payments and authentication and protected content. Outside of real value add, there, there's kind of two big ones. One is we support uh, what we call individual as well as team-based memberships. So mm -hmm. if you needed to sell memberships to like a company, uh, we support that. But the other is just the all-in-one nature of the product. So um, speaking in Webflow terms, like something a lot of people are excited about is is logic and how logic can help you build workflows with other tools. Mm -hmm. Outseta brings those other tools into the same platform. So you can build out onboarding sequences or track engagement with your website or all these sorts of other things you'd typically need to do in the context of growing a membership business. Right. So, uh, Jeff, could I tell you a little secret? I think you are speaking to the to the wrong audience here because everyone here loves to use 15 tools. <laughs> I know, I know. It's funny. Uh, I used to joke with Ben from from MakerPad. I was like, MakerPad must hate Outseta because we're basically telling you not to integrate all these tools right. and to use a single platform instead. Right. But I will say this, and I joke about this. You know, my accountant always mm -hmm. says, like, when will you start making money with automate all the things? And I'm like, when I stop buying tools. And he's like, when are you gonna stop buying tools? I'm like, never, never, never. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, for people who actually want happy accountants and happy business, I think Outsider has a uh, an interesting offering, which is let's do the the eighty percent uh, for you. And then if you need something, I guess more specialized, like I need the best onboarding sequence. You're like, well, yeah, go go use the best in class for that, but. Uh, you're saying, let's just get started with Outseta. Is that kind of framing it correctly? Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's kind of two value props. The first one is definitely just speed to market. So mm -hmm. the ethos of our company is deliver what you want to, you know, on your own terms, using whatever products you like quickly, but we can help you launch much faster. So you can focus all your time on your educational content and not integrating all these systems. Right. After the speed to market bit, um, there is, you know, it's not everybody, but there's a buyer persona out there who, likes the idea that you log into a single platform to manage your business. So whether you need to issue a refund or send an email or answer customer mm -hmm. service questions, you can do it all from within outside as an interface. Right. I, I'm just going to take a moment to say that is the main buyer persona. Most people don't want to use eight tools. Sure. It just so happens that if we did a Venn gram of normal people and a Venn yep. diagram of people who watch AETT, that has very little overlap in terms of you know, number of tools that they like to use, but I'm sure for, for everyone else, this is, this is exciting. So, uh, um, really excited to jump in before we do, we're going to use like an, like a, like a course use case because I'm selfish and I like learning for things I may want to use, but, uh, what sure. would be some of the main use cases that, uh, you know, Outseta is used for today? 
Yeah, there, there's really four that are common in our customer base. Um, the common theme between them is they're all startup businesses that have mm -hmm. a recurring revenue component. Mm -hmm. um, but the first one is just SaaS products, um, any sort of SaaS product, um, whether it's built with code or no code. Second one is a traditional membership site. Um, in this case, it's going to be sort of a, a video course focused membership site. Mm -hmm. Um, the third one is online communities. So if you wanted to sell access to a community uh, by charging recurring fees, we integrate with Circle and Discord and those sorts of products. Mm. Um, and the fourth one, we really haven't spent much time and energy on, but we're seeing it kind of grow naturally right now. And that's like individual freelancers, consultants, small agencies mm -hmm. that sell their services on a retainer basis mm. and want to use Outseta as kind of their own personal tech stack. Got it. Got it. So, you know, the overlap between those is recurring revenue some kind of you know gating whether it's the app authentication i would say maybe more generally than gating yep. uh uh and that kind of desire to have everything all in once whether it's help desk tickets or or email and onboarding uh um and that's that's really really cool so i'd love to know in the chat as we dive in do you have a use case for authentication right with pay recurring payments i know that there's some folks who wanted to replace gumroad it sounds like this is a replacement to Gumroad as long as you have that like recurring model, right? Uh, uh, is that correct? That's right. Yeah, that, that's right. We have a similar audience in the sense that our customers are sort of creators, digital mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Um, if there is a recurring revenue component, generally speaking, I think Outseta is a, is a good replacement. Um, that's the commonality. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in. Uh, uh, let me know in the chat if you have some ideas of how you'd like to use it or any questions. I've always got my eye in chat and really happy to answer any of those questions for thanking you to come live. So let's go jump in here. Okay, so setting this up, I have your basic, this is a, I literally copy pasted a template and I created one CMS, which are just like lessons from a course that if we ever wanna get a CMS, everything Perfect. else is your template. And I'm Beautiful. in the dashboard. The show All is right. yours, Jeff. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set up some membership plans. So in this example, we're building you know, a, a learning management system of some sort. We want to gate video content so you can only view certain videos if you have mm -hmm. a particular membership level. Um, first thing we're going to do is jump over to the billing tab on the left-hand side of the screen. Okay, so maybe at a, at a high level, should I be, like, I know we do a lot of streams with Stripe. Mm -hmm. Should I be thinking in Stripe terms as we do this, like this is a product with prices and customers, or is this a separate kind of, talk to me about the, the general model of where we're going, and then we'll do the kind of steps. Sure. Um, so this is something that is pretty unique to Outseta. Um, first of all, payments are processed via Stripe. If you click on the billing and settings tab um, right down there, mm -hmm. uh, you'll see I've connected to a Stripe account using our test API key so we can right. run fake financial transactions. Um, but Outseta uses Stripe solely as a payment gateway, which is very different mm -hmm. from most other membership software products. Basically what that means is you're gonna set up your products, you're gonna set up your subscriptions in out setup. And a big part of our ethos is once you connect to Stripe, you never need to log into Stripe for anything. Got if you it. want to create a product, if you wanna change prices, if you wanna issue refunds, you do all of that from within out setup. Mm -hmm. You will still see all of your payments in Stripe. You'll have customer records in Stripe but you will not see products set up in Stripe. Products get set up in Outseta instead. Okay, as a streamer, I, I appreciate the fact that I don't have to go to Stripe and hide and show my API keys, so thank you. <laughs> I'm, you're probably not targeting streamers, but I appreciate that. So, so I'm gonna stop thinking in Stripe. So mm -hmm. as we jump in here, what is the model of Outseta? Like at a theoretical, let's not even jump in, like I'm gonna create a billing plan, that people can yep. tie users to? Give me the model and then we'll kind of build step by step. Yeah, so it'll be helpful if you can click on billing and then plans. Okay. Uh, this is, and click add a plan. This is how you set up your actual subscription plans. Okay. Um, there's, a, there's a couple sort of fundamental ideas here that are important to consider. The first one is 
any individual person can only be subscribed to a single plan at a time. Okay. Um, so everyone's going to have sort of what we call like a primary subscription or a primary membership. Um, we're not going to go into this today, but you can set up and sell unlimited products and unlimited subscriptions to any given customer. Mm -hmm. Those are set up as what we call add-on products and outside of, we can look at that going forward if sure. we want to, but for now we'll set up plans. The other thing um, of note as you set this up is if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see it says registration mode. This is where you pick whether you're setting up an individual or team-based subscription. Got it. So if it's a team-based subscription, somebody comes and signs up for that subscription, but then they can invite additional people from their company or organization. Mm. Everybody gets their own login credentials and is logging into essentially the same subscription, the same account. Okay. I have a question mm -hmm. um, because... Again, a very personal question because, sure. um, you know, as I created a course, uh, the ultimate guide to Airtable, everyone should go check it out. Um, I got people who told me, Hey, I want to buy this for my whole team. Yep. Right. So is this, so in, in the, and they're saying, could I buy seven seats or 10 seats? Is this idea that, uh, yep. um, you could, I could say, Oh, the, you, how many seats do you want to buy? And I could charge them for all of those seats at once or, kind of they invite people and then that seats get charged as well. So you have a bunch of different options is the the short version. Got if it. you use, if you use what we call our standard pricing model, right. uh, that is like regular recurring billing where mm -hmm. you're going to sell a subscription that's let's say $99 a month. And if you use that model, you can invite as many people for 90 for the $99 a month subscription fee to that account right. as you want to. Right. You can also, if you look where it says maximum number of people, right. you can set a maximum number of people on a subscription plan. So we have a lot of customers that will say, mm -hmm. I want to have like a three seat plan for $99 or a five seat plan Got for it. $149. You can set that up Cool. or you can select per user pricing. And that is a straight per seat fee. So mm. if you wanted to charge $20 a seat, the user sees a little input field at checkout and can say, I'm buying six seats. Okay. That was uh, making a complex. Thank you for entertaining my specific use case. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I get for hosting the stream. Uh, nice. But let's. What is a simpler? I think individual is the simpler kind of model where yep. we're saying, every, you know, more course. Like I want to. Every person needs to pay X Y Z amount. Yep. Uh, so let's pick that. And you're I essentially saying, how much should we charge per month per user? That's right. Yeah. Cool. So for the sake of that, we can make it whatever you want. Um, I'd say like 99 bucks a month. If you want to set up an annual rate, you can add an annual rate. Um, nope, that's all good. Let's give it, let's, so it's, wow. Okay, so this is interesting because there's a lot of, you know, uh, uh, how to say like customization, which I often will do in Stripe, but this is kind yeah. of a reflection of your ethos of like everything is set up here. Correct, yep. Okay. So there's, um, you can, have all sorts of different types of free trials. Like you can experiment with accepting a credit card up front uh, to start a free trial or not. Um, you can charge setup fees mm. if you want to have custom expiration dates. So if you had like seasonal subscriptions or something like that, you can do that. Um, and then the custom post login path is basically if you want to build a different experience for users based on the plan that they're on, you can sort of redirect people to different landing pages upon login based on the subscription or membership plan they signed up for. Got it. Um, but the whole idea with the product in general is we sell primarily to startups and most of them don't know, you know what their pricing should be or even their pricing model. We give you a lot of flexibility to, to mm. figure that out and make it easy to change your pricing or pricing model without requiring developers. Got it. Okay. So let's assume we don't need any of that um, let's go ahead and add. Oh, I'm, I can't add. So we need, we need to add a plan name, uh, oh, up, at okay. the, up at the very top. Um, you can just call it, let's call it like right ATT there. full access Cool. and plan family. This is the default. That's fine. Yeah. You can leave that still can't add. So what is, oh, we have a, uh, what's this? Oh, I need Do I need a description? Uh, you shouldn't. Let me see. Default ATT full access. I've got um, plan is active. I'm an individual. And then it, it has like a little input. Click, uh, click team here. 
Oh, it's because I, I turned this on. I need to turn okay. it off. There we go. There we go. Okay. Scroll down. There we go. I can see you writing the Jira ticket. You know? Yes. <laughs> the, the outset of ticket, I should say. This is what the value is of seeing someone do it live. Um, For cool. sure. Okay. So now now we've got now we've got a plan. Uh, and now we can start the actual integration with, with Webflow. Okay. Um, so next we're gonna head over to the auth tab. Okay. Auth. And we're and we're gonna click sign up and login. There's a couple okay. settings on this page that we need to put in place uh, before we actually do the integration. So I'll talk you through these. Um, first of all, there's a toggle you see at the top that says send confirmation email. Mm -hmm. What this is, is after somebody signs up, Outsetta sends them an email uh, that validates that they signed up with a legitimate right. email address and then prompts them to set a password. We're gonna wanna leave that on. Mm -hmm. And then the post login URL is really the only thing you have to input on this page. This okay. is when somebody comes back to your site and logs in successfully, where do you want them to land? So this is probably going to be a dashboard of some mm -hmm. sort um, on, on your Webflow site where we want the user to land after login. Got it. And quick question as we jump in here, um, I know we're using Webflow as you know our front end, if you will, mm -hmm. um, but is, is that the, the only kind of website tool I can use? Are there favorites? Like what does this work with? Yeah, you can, so outside is completely tech stack agnostic. Um, you can okay. integrate this with any sort of development framework. You can integrate this with online community tools. You can integrate this with any sort of website builder you want. Mm -hmm. um, Webflow is by far the most common amongst our customer base. Um, after that is actually development frameworks and people building SaaS products. Cool. Um, but we see a lot of Notion. We see a lot of Discord. We see a lot of Circle, mm -hmm. um, WordPress, Squarespace card. Um, all those tools are very common. Cool. Okay. We're going to use Webflow because I work at Webflow and it's what we both, it's what definitely what I know best. So um, For sure. here in your template, what should I be redirect? I'll be honest. I haven't looked at the website very much. So okay. uh, I have a th Per, I must have a dashboard of some kind. Let's use that protected content oh, okay. uh, page there. So this is just a page used to demonstrate sort of protected content. There's a video on it. Um, we'll protect okay. this page so you can't get there unless you have a membership. Which I don't, which is awesome. Which you don't. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can copy paste this. Uh, oh, so it's just, uh, okay. So it's this slash protected content. Um, Colleen is asking if the resolution is okay for you. I know I'm, we're, we have a, a new setup here, Jeff. So how, how's the stream going? It's a, it's a little blurry, but it's not bad. Okay. Okay. Cool. So login settings, this is where people are going to redirect to. And then sign up yep. settings are what fields people need to input to log in. Or That's to right. sign up, I should say. Yeah. For now, I would add in a person name um, just, just for the sake of it. Uh, there you go. Um, make that required. And then there is two other things on this page. I, I don't think we need to set these up now, but there's a post sign up URL. Mm -hmm. That is a page we can just redirect a user to after sign up. Um, it's good real estate to say, like, you know, thank you for purchasing mm -hmm. our course. Check your email um, because we're, we're sending you an email to set oh, your okay. password. Like a confirmation kind of page, right? Exactly. It's also commonly used for sake of conversion tracking. Right. Um, you can only land on that page if you buy a product. So if you want to know like where people mm. are coming from. Um, okay, let's set up thank you. Let's just go to okay. thank you after. And should cool. folks be setting up their like live domain or their testing domain or just slash? Yeah, for, for now, um, using this testing domain works. Um, okay. In the real world, obviously, you'd probably want to use your, your real domain, but um, that's it. And there is at the bottom there, uh, we won't set it up now, but if you do want to use Google to log people in and out of your site, you can use that as well. Fantastic. For now, we'll go with the email and password route. Okay, so we've set up the URL people kind of go to once they've confirmed their email. Yep. We have what we want to sign up with. And okay, so how do I actually tie these things together with my website so someone could be like yeah let's sign up for sure um have we did you save at the bottom of this page i did sure yeah we... i did oh, okay cool um now we're going to go back over to that off tab yep we're going to click embeds and this is the part that is scary simple 
Um, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna copy this one script that is called the Quick Start Head Script, mm -hmm. and you're gonna drop that into the header of your Webflow site. All pages. All pages. Yep. All pages. Let's go. This this one script basically enables all of Outsetta's functionality. So this is kind of the only real lift to, to setting this up. Okay, let's save that. Let's republish. Boom, okay, I did that. All right, and now below this, there's a series of links. There's a sign-up link, a login link, uh, a profile link, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then a logout link. These links are going to be tied to buttons that are on your Webflow site. So we're starting with a template that has a sign-up button and a login button and a logout link and all that. Right. If you're starting with your own template, those are the four things you basically need to add into your, your template. You need a link or button that we tie each of these two. Let's actually leave the sign up for last um, and I'll explain why in a minute. Okay, let's sure. start. Let's start with the login link. Um, you can just copy that. So wait, wait, I, this is a, a outset a subdomain. Mm -hmm. See, I can zoom in now, by the way, folks, let me know in the chat. This, I know nice. this is a request. Right. Yep. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. There you go. So this is different from what I've seen in the past in that, uh, often a lot of folks will do with like, uh, specific tags, right. Where it invokes a little bit of script that then brings up a pop-up. Yep. How does this work? Whoops. <clears throat> you'll, you'll see as we tie this to a button, this is going to open a pop-up. Um, you won't okay. see that URL whatsoever. Okay, but it is what I'm kind of linking to, which is really interesting, right? So it's a URL versus, okay, so login link. Let's go here. Let's go back to my site. Let's go to designer. Uh, and I'm going to include this uh, build, kind of this uh, template in the description of the video. So for folks kind of want to starting from here. So login, yep. I'm going to edit the component. Tie settings that that URL. Right here. It's a let's just go like that. Let's paste here. So we're going to the URL. Let's save. We don't need to save. That's all good. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing with the link that says my profile and the link that says logout. Okay. So while you're doing the profile, um, what the profile embed is is basically a self-service customer portal. Um, so a logged in user can interact with the profile embed. That's how they would invite team members to share their subscription. Um, they can change their subscription. They can edit their billing information. Um, you're here doing the logout link. The way that the logout link works is you need to tell us what page you want to send somebody to mm -hmm. once they log out. Got it. So that gets appended typically to your homepage URL. If you want someone to log out right. and land back on the homepage, you put that at the end of your homepage. Okay. So because I'm not specifying, it's just going to go to like current page logout. Uh, so this is the only thing I need to put, or is that a setting I need to set up on your side? You should put in before that little bit that you have in right. the URL field there, just the homepage URL. Got it. Okay. Because otherwise it's just going to stay on the current page, which doesn't make sense if you're like on a gated. Right. Okay. Awesome. Um, All right. <laughs> okay, I think we've set it up and let me know in the chat if there are specific use cases people are interested in, whether it's gaining CMSs, showing and hiding things. Uh, I have a lot of questions for Jeff, but want to make sure that they're valuable to everyone joining live. So um, cool. We're going to do the sign up link now and we're going to do something a little bit different with the sign up link. Um, and as if you jump back into Outsetta, I will tell yep. you why. So this sign up link that's included here by default will allow people to start by selecting a plan. So if you have a bunch of plans, mm. it gives you a pick list and says, pick the plan you want. And then you proceed down the path of signing up for whatever plan you select. Mm -hmm. In this case, we've only um, added one plan. So you sort of start with a step that doesn't make sense. You're asked right. to choose a plan when there's one plan. Right. So instead, um, if you scroll up to the top of this page, we're going to click on sign up um, right there. And this is um, arguably like the most important screen in all of OutSetup. This is how you can specify exactly what your signup forms look like and what plans they display and all of that. Um, so I'll walk you through this configuration tool here. It says embed type on a page right now. If you click that drop down, 
all of Outset's signup forms can either be embedded directly onto a page, they can open as a pop-up, or you can create payment links. Mm. So the first thing I want to do where it says embed type is change it to uh, a pop-up. Next, you're going to select um, where it says plan family or plan. We're going to select plan. Um, because we only have one, right? So it's like there's no need for us to have a plan family because... Yeah, we just have that one plan, which is just a plan family. But if I had multiple, I would first have people select that one and then jump into the sign up. You got it. Awesome. Um, and now you're just gonna click install your embed, that uh, green button. And we just need to grab this pop-up trigger link. That's all we need in this case. Okay, so I can also do the the scripting part if I'm, you know, uh, don't wanna use this kind of that setup. So let's go here. Yep. And we've just created some URL parameters. Yep. Okay. Let's save that. Let's publish our website. There we go. And at this point, you have a functioning website. So if you actually go to the published version of that website, um, a quick thing you can do to just validate that you've kind of set this up correctly mm -hmm. is click that sign up button, for example. Um, and there were actually two sign up buttons, so we probably want to link them both at some point. But yep. there you go. You've got your sign nice. up pop up. Click that login button. You'll see you've got the login pop up working as well. Should we give it a try? Can we? Can sure. we test it with the testing? Um, let's wait actually for a minute because we do want to. Um, we're right now sending somebody upon login to a page of content that we haven't protected yet. Right. Um, what, which is fine, but we should set that up first. Okay, let's set that up. It. Let's set that up. I want to keep the confetti for actual good moments, right? We don't want to <laughs> cheat. We don't want to. In 2023, we are not doing easy confettis. Every time That's we confetti, it. it's it's going to be a big moment. So, what? I, awesome. So essentially, we've now set up the authentication, but we haven't gated any content. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So we're going to stay on this auth tab, uh, but if you click uh, click over on the icon on the left where it says auth. Yep. Um, You'll then go down to protected content. Got it. And we're going to click where it says add protected content. This is sort of the most basic type of protected content in Outseta. Um, you can call it protected content. You yeah. So let's, it, what is this called? So this would be, we called this <clears throat> no access or protected content, right? We so, just called it protected content. Oh, uh, okay. We're boring. That was boring. I should make it better. <laughs> um, okay. Let's go here. We want protected content. Yes, that is exactly right. All confetti is earned in 2023. I say Perfect. that, but I also want like just a lot of confetti in 2023. So I'm very, uh, I'm torn. So our URL that we want to gate is slash protected content. Yep. So right now, because it says equals, we're just protecting that one page, which right. is fine for the sake of this example. You can protect entire folders too. So sites that have more video content built on Webflow, typically the videos are going to be in a CMS collection and you're gonna gate that entire folder. Right. Um, but for now we can just protect this. Mm -hmm. And then where it says um, plans and add-ons with access to this group. Yep. Um, what did we name our, oh, I forget what we named What do we, plan. do we name our plan? Let me go check, Let me go check. <laughs> it's okay, we can cancel. Let's save, no, we need one. Oh no, it's okay. Uh, let's go into plan families. We called it def, man, we are boring. Did we no, call it, it default? No, no go, to, plan. go to plans, go to plans. I okay, no, I think we called plan. it like AETT full access. Okay. Okay. So now we'll go back to that auth and protected content. Okay, protected content. I called it go. protected confetti because I was thinking about, <laughs> let's call it protected content. Uh, protected content. And then the plan we're going to add this to is AETT. Just type AETT. There you go. Um, okay. So that's just us saying, Someone can only reach this protected content URL if they have that particular plan. Uh, you click save and your content is protected. Okay. I always I love my content. So I am not signed in. If I go to slash protected content like that. Okay. It just redirects me to the home page, but I saw an option there to redirect to the no what access. We that's right. Yep. Okay. Let's go and edit that. So, so most sites will have sort of an access denied um, URL. That is just another page with a sign up form on it. So if someone does try to access one of those protected URLs, mm -hmm. we just say, Hey, you don't have access, sign up and you can do this page. Okay. 
So let's ref it might take some time to propagate, which I saw. Um, well, let's see if it works. Protected content. No, it's still not. Pro pro let's give it some time. We can check it later. Okay, so now we now have gated content that we should have access to. Are we redirecting to that protected content We're when someone signs in? S signs That's up. right. Okay. Yep. So everything yep. is good to go. Everything is good to go. Um, there's one other thing we should maybe set up now, which is uh, engagement tracking. Okay. So if you jump into Webflow, this is one of the features that is sort of most unique to Outseta and really helpful in the context of, of building a site like this. So if you want to know which content people are actually consuming, um, you can use a custom attribute and track when somebody has clicked an element on a page, um, watched a video, completed a video, anything like that. So for the sake of this example, we have this page and we have a video below. Yeah. If you select the video element. Okay, let's go here. The whole the, the whole the whole thing is fine. You can do the play button if you prefer. Um, it, it doesn't matter let's, too much. Yeah, let's pick the kind of uh, everything that has it in it, if you will, right? Yep. This relative. Um, yep. Div. And we're gonna we're gonna go down to custom attributes. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add a custom attribute. The name is data. Hyphen o. Hyphen account. <laughs> hyphen activity. Yeah. And then the value can be whatever you want to call um, th this video. So in the case of an LMS, typically you have different video lessons mm -hmm. um, and you can tag them all differently. And you're basically recording when somebody starts uh, viewing one of these lessons. So just so what I'm essentially doing here, because so how I usually do this is that if someone interacts with a piece of content, I have to like fire a front end tag to mm -hmm. convert kit. And I think a lot of people, yep. because of the difficulty of doing this, usually resort to forms because yep. forms integrate really nicely, but it's quite frustrating as a user to be like, Hey, so I can track data, click this button, right? What yep. you're essentially saying is, is we're able to add these as custom attributes to be able to track what people are doing. Um, and then, on the outset side, we're going to be able to trigger campaigns based off of these types of activity. Is that kind of correct? That's a, exactly right. So there's actually three ways that this is going to become useful in outset and we'll, we'll show you all three. Um, the first is there's a dashboard where you can look at engagement reporting in aggregate. Okay. So let's say, let's say you've got 10 lessons and you want to know which video is, or which video content is popular. We'll show you how many customers have watched each video and exactly which customers right. have watched each video. You'll also see this on each individual member's CRM record. So if there's mm -hmm. a record for Jeff, you'll be able to see, you know, Jeff's on the ATT membership plan and he's watched three of the 12 videos. These are the three that he's watched. And then you can also use this to trigger email automation. So if you wanted to trigger like a congrats on completing this lesson automation or something like that, um, you can set up those workflows as well. Cool. Okay, so let's actually see that in practice. I want to do a whole flow, and yep. then I want to sign up myself. I want to interact, and then I want to see myself in the CRM. Um, and Let I'm the person who buys a course and doesn't watch any of it. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love buying courses. I hate doing the work. Um, sure. So let's try the whole flow. Let's do one more thing in Outset sure. of first, sure. um, and then we'll go through the whole flow. Yeah. So the other thing I want to show um, is around email automation and some sort of welcome sequence. Got it. So I'm going to send you over to CRM uh, yep. and then segments. Yep. Segments are groups of users with some sort of shared characteristic. We're going to click add a segment, and we can name this uh, ATT, AATT yep. membership or something like that. Yeah. Um, and the conditions we're going to set are account subscription plan equals, and then yes, yeah, it's, yeah, uh, we have the one is, you know, equals yeah Right. So we have that one, uh, add. Okay. So what's happening here, as soon as somebody signs up for that membership plan, they're going to get added into this segment. And then we can use the fact that they were added to the segment to trigger an onboarding email. So now we're going to jump over to email. And we're going to click on drip campaigns. 
and I click add a drip campaign. You can call this like onboarding sequence or something like that. We'll just set up a single email for now. Uh, but the conditions that would start somebody in this is going to be person added to a segment. Person added to, right, to our membership segment. Okay. Click then, save. And from. You can, you can put in whatever you like here. It's interesting. You've built, like, I, I out of curiosity, who powers this? Like, it seems like you are, are you, are you, like, powering the whole email setup? Did you guys build this from scratch or are you guys using someone which is totally fine like to run the, the back end of this we've we've built all of the interface that you are interacting with the emails are actually sent via send grid okay that makes sense that makes total sense yeah okay so i'm gonna say you know in, you know intro new user let's create a message and uh let's just say it's simple text and then i'll i'll just have the you can just send yeah you don't need to yeah we can just do the email it's fine Hello. Thank you for buying my course. <sighs> this is very, this is not too different from the, the ATT sequence, to be honest. Let's go. That's it. This is the, this is where we're bringing in that, that energy into 2023. Perfect. Done. Okay. Activate. Click, click activate. Uh, yep. Nice. There you, there you go. That's set up. Now we can test the whole thing live. Um, so we'll just go to the public version of the website. Uh, you can let me do, let me just you know let's let's publish. You never know. You got to publish before. That helps. You know. <laughs> now that I work at Webflow, I'm like, did we publish? Let's just publish. Let's just make sure everything is good. Okay. So I want to sign up. Um, now is a good time. Drop your questions in the chat. Uh, around, you know, is there a specific functionality that you want us to chat about or, you know, more power or what you would want from Outsetta? Uh, Jeff knows everything clearly about Outsetta, so it's going to be fun to... Um, could I do the test card or... or yeah, just do 42424242. How many... Oh, wait. The, oh, sh I forgot. The, okay, let me do that again. My name is Ariel. Last name is Cornblit. And then my name, so 4242, 4242, 4242, 4242. Oh, wait, that that's too. my name. Yeah. Uh, do I feel stupid? Absolutely. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can three, put in any values here. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. matter. Okay, let's do that. Sign up and play. Now, um, so this is, this is now going to send you that confirmation email. Okay. That email is probably going to be in your promotions folder right now because we haven't set up domain authentication yep. and some other stuff around email sending. Okay. Let um, me just uh, hide my screen for a bit, just a quick second. Uh, and then let's go into, yep, there we go. Confirm. So let me just unhide here. There we go. Confirm your account. And yes, I have 11,631 unread emails. And if you are <laughs> one of those unread emails, I am extremely sorry. Please, please send it again. Uh, I am very bad at email. Okay. This is okay. going to prompt you to set a password. Oh, um, cool. I actually love this idea, right? Because, uh, yeah, I, I like the fact that the password is the least important thing but it's also what blocks people because they're like, oh, I got to go to my password manager. Like, I would much rather have a credit card than password. So this is really cool. And now I'm on protected content. Now you're on that page of protected content because we recognized it login right. that you had an appropriate membership level to get here. Yeah. Um, go ahead and you can click that video now. Yes. Um, there you go. Okay. It, it, it's fine. That will register. You can okay. X out of here. Click on my profile for a minute. We'll just show you what mm -hmm. this is. So this is the member profile. Um, if they wanted to change their plan, they would come mm -hmm. over here to the plan tab. If they wanted to update their billing information, they go to the billing tab, uh, basically giving the member the ability to make changes to their membership on their own. Um, and then you can X out of this. If you click log out, you get logged out and you'll get redirected to the homepage. Okay. And I think... We had one more thing we wanted was the making sure we got the drip campaign. So I think if we got the drip campaign, we've kind of come full flow. So let me again, yep. hide my screen here as I go into, let's come back here. All right, we've yep. got our hello and boom. Yep. That's it. 
congratulations yeah. to us. We you've got yourself an LMS. There you go. Um, <laughs> And we did it in 36 minutes. So I checked in seven minutes. And, and I feel like we could have gone faster if I wasn't asking, you know, so many dumb questions. So yeah. that's amazing. Uh, a few things I love about this is that, um, you know, as someone who creates content and who has a, a, a course, um, the amount of brain power it took me so that a user's status in membership reflects its user status in uh, uh, um, my email marketing platform because you could be you could be signed up not validated your email you could be signed up validated email but haven't paid for my course yep. you could be yep. signed up not verified paid but not yet in the course because you haven't so there's like three things you could be but when you pick two out of three or three out of three it's like nine statuses and i was like why yeah. is this so hard to, and someone was like, oh, but what if he validates their email like a week after? Oh my God. So um, I'm way too late. I have way too many platforms, way too many tools, Jeff. I'm very sorry. I wish we had this conversation okay. six months ago. <laughs> um, but if you're willing to do the dirty work, I'm, I'm willing to, 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 to migrate. But um, I want to see the part where I see myself in here. So where do I go for the reporting side? Yeah, so there's a couple different places. Let's first go to CRM. Yeah. Uh, and click on accounts. Yep. So as soon as somebody signs up, we automatically create a CRM record for that person. Mm -hmm. If you click into the, um, the record now, you can click on your name here. Um, this is a few of the things that are really unique about Outsetta uh, uh, 2 shown on this page. First thing is you can see, you know, the subscription you signed up for and what you're paying and all of that. Um, if you scroll up to the top of the page, um, or actually we didn't process a payment, but normally um, we do show what we call customer lifetime revenue. It's the right. actual amount of money you've collected from the person mm -hmm. over time. That would normally show um, down here where it says subscription history. If you click on transactions, you can see mm -hmm. your, in, you can see your invoice. You could open it, you could refund it, all those kinds of things. Um, but in the engagement section down here on the CRM record, we're seeing two things, Right. Uh, one that you logged in and one that you clicked on that, that video because we set up engagement mm. tracking. Um, so imagine you've got you know ten lessons. You would know which lessons this particular user has has gone through. Yeah, and um, and honestly, I love that idea because someone will ask me a question and I'm gonna be like, "Did you watch the lesson?" And I can be like, <laughs> "Yo, yeah. Brian, you didn't watch the lesson." You know, um, I'm joking. I know that doesn't happen with, with, you know, ATT subscribers. It does happen with, <laughs> with, uh, with subscribers on, on other places. Um, yep. so that makes total sense. I do have some questions for, from the chat that sure. I, I want to make sure we answer. Um, so one question from Penny was, uh, where's the question from Penny? Can the text on the outset of pages be edited? And I think what you mean by that is, are those pop-ups and more generally, I guess, Jeff, when I'm looking at the way people sign up, what kind of control from text or styling do I have? Sure. So if you go over to auth and embeds and then click on sign up, mm -hmm. um, there's a few things of note here. So using this configuration tool, there's a bunch of different configurations um, you can do in terms of how the sign up embed presents itself, meaning a pop up of payment link or embedded on a page as well as what plans are shown. If you wanna um, sell add-on products, you can introduce another step after a membership is purchased where you can purchase other products. There's things of that nature that can be customized just mm -hmm. using that tool. From a design perspective, if you click customize design, um, which is up in kind of the top left-hand corner of the screen, we do give you some design tools. You can change fonts, button styles, colors, use dark mode, all that stuff. Um, the basic idea here is you have enough design control that a relatively non-technical person can style these forms so that they match the aesthetic of your site. Got it. A lot of our Webflow customers, um, Corey Moen actually did an amazing job um, on a demo recently using Outseta. Um, if you drop the embeds onto a page in Webflow, you can then apply CSS mm. um, and Webflow directly to these embeds to Got style it. them further. So okay. you do have quite a bit of control of all that. Got it. Perfect. Okay, two more questions for you. Uh, and you know we've got some time here. Drop your questions for Jeff. Um, 
No Code Canada asks, uh, can Outseta support multi-language dynamically based on locale? And I imagine you're asking because of Quebec. Uh, so you're welcome, by the way, as a French Canadian, very important. <laughs> uh, that's because of us. Uh, so how would someone have a concept of uh, language? Yep. So from a translation perspective, um, basically the sign up, the login and the profile embeds are the customer facing components that your customers will actually interact with. Mm -hmm. And we can host translation files in different languages that are picked up on by the primary language set in someone's internet browser. So okay. if their internet browser is set to French, we will automatically show a French translation. And we have translations already in place for 10 or 12 different languages, I think. Um, but if you want us to host your own translation file where you provide all the translated language, we can do that on your behalf. Very cool. Um, so from Quebec, thank you for doing that. And thank you for translating your sign-up pages. <laughs> um, it is, uh, it, it's so funny. Um, so we've got these 10 or 12 translations already in place, but we probably have 40 customers that are French that have all said, we don't want other people's French translations. We yes. want to use the exact language that we want to <laughs> use. So we've got like 40 different French files. Yes. Um, yes. Cause the funny thing is, is like, uh, as a French Canadian, when I go to like a French, French website, it's worded very differently, yep. um, mm. than like a French Canadian, if you will, French. Um, so for sure. So mm. not only is it good for, French Canadians, but also thank you as the French people, proper French who, who don't necessarily understand what, what we're talking about. So I'm not going to get into <laughs> too many linguistic politics here on the stream. Um, another question comes from Glenn. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, and this should, maybe should, I should have asked at the beginning, uh, is this fully like JavaScript? So if I have JavaScript disabled, does outside it just kind of nod gate? And it seems like maybe the answer is yes. And you've kind of adapted to that. Yeah. So we do use JavaScript to gate content. Um, we do have a secondary script that you can add to the site, which makes it. So if someone disables JavaScript, they just get redirected to a particular page. Mm. So most of our customers will use that and say, if someone disables JavaScript, just always redirect them to right. the homepage. So that alleviates the concern of people accessing content just by disabling JavaScript. Um, one of the things we're actually talking to Webflow about right now um, is becoming uh, listed in the Webflow app marketplace. And one of the things we are talking to your development team about is being able to use backend content protection in Webflow without setup. Right. Um, the API endpoints aren't there quite yet, but um, that, that's certainly something we're looking to support going forward. Um, with that enhanced content protection script that we offer today, that's worked pretty well for most use cases. We still encourage people though, if you have like credit card information or healthcare records or anything like that, I would not gate it without setup. Got it. Okay. Which, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, awesome. I think those are all the questions that we have for today. So, awesome. um, Jeff, huge thanks for coming on and, uh, 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 showing us that 36 minutes is enough to build a monetized uh, course platform and that folks can focus on the content and use you guys for everything else. Thanks so much for having me. This was fun. All right. Well, I'll see you soon, Jeff. Thank you to uh, Glenn, Raymar, Joel, Penny, uh, uh, everyone for coming. I hope to see you back next week where I'm going to have uh, Olivia look she teach us how to use Zapier like a pro. She's actually going to help me automate some of the processes here. So it's going to be huge, huge fun. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jeff, again. Have a great day, y'all, and I'll see you back same time next week. Take care, everyone. Mm -hmm.